good afternoon everyone uh, thank you uh, for joining the session and um, today basically i want to talk about a concept called sap system landscape so one of the question which is a lot of students ask about sap system landscape so i just want to do a quick video on sap system landscape so in the real world how does sap system landscape look like so in a project site when you are there you will see that sap have three layer sap system landscape you will see three boxes here so development clients or development box quality client or quality systems quality box production client and the production box so you will always find that these are the three environment which is there on a project site in the real world each of these clients each of these boxes each of these systems has a specific purpose meaning and we need to know that what that meaning and the purpose is so we can act correctly accordingly when we are on the project site so as the name suggests we have production system the production box in the production box we basically business users do sap business transactions the restrictions are applied in the production environment you cannot do any configuration normally no configuration is allowed unless there could be certain things which you cannot do in uh, or you cannot move or transport only such limited configuration could be done like number range configuration and all that apart from that no other configuration can be and would be done as far as um, production client is concerned then here we have a development client now development client is very important for the consultant purpose purposes from the configuration purposes from the development purposes from a testing purposes so what the development client will be done so the development boxes you will do configuration so configuration would be done in development unit testing anything which you make sure that um, uh, you would like to do unit testing that unit testing you will do in the development boxes then within the development environment you can have a multiple client you see that's 800 900 700 and all that now this 800 900 and 700 is just is an example in the real world those numbers could be something different this may not be 800 this may not be 900 this may not be 700 or whatever but is a three digit key normally those three digit are the numeric it could be alphanumeric also but in most cases these are the three digit key to identify a simple client and those three keys could be whatever that doesn't make a difference now the reason i'm saying is that you will see 800 or 900 or something here in the client and normally the training systems have the client 800 800 is just an example in the real world this 800 could be something different completely could be 100 could be 150 200 whatever now each of these client within the development would have a separate purpose so configuration you will do in development unit testing you will do in configuration programmer when they're writing program they will do in development so programmers when they're writing the code they normally will do writing the code within development environment when the configuration is done and here you have tested it also then you will move it to the quality boxes in the quality boxes you will do integration testing or user accepted testing 
QA boxes are also used for the purpose of training. So when we say training, you will do the training also in the quality environment. Master data upload also you will do in quality environment. Okay. So these are the three system architecture and these are the purpose of all these different boxes. So this is called three client architecture, three system architecture, three box architecture. And those three boxes are development, quality, and production. Now, another thing which we need to know that, okay, I did the configuration here and how we will move it to quality. So how do we move it to quality? We move it by transaction code SE10. SE10 is the transaction code. Once your configuration is done, when your configuration is tested, when your configuration is verified, and when you're ready to move, then you will do transport requests. So SE10 is used for the purpose of releasing your transport. When you release your transport, at that time, the transport will go to quality and other target system. How do you release? So for the release, the transaction code is SE10. So we go to SE10. All transport requests are divided into two categories, customizing request, or the workbench request. Workbench basically means any kind of programming you do. In that case, system creative workbench transport request. For the functional consultant, when you're doing uh, access sequence configuration, etc., at that time also, system will do transport request type workbench and uh, you can also do customizing request also okay so that is what this basically uh, means and uh, now you can uh, select customizing request you can select transport request here you have a modifiable. Modifiable basically means which is not released. And, uh, and uh, <clears throat> then we have a basically you also get here released transport request as well. Okay. So we have a modifiable in the release. Release basically means the one which has already been released. We don't want them. We want only modifiable. We go to display. So here, when we go to display, then we have this workbench request, and then we have this customizing request. We don't care about workbench because this is more for the programmers and all that. So we go to customizing request. And when you go to customizing request, then these are all different transport requests which we have done in the past. So all the transport requests, these are the transport requests which is created by me in this box, in the system, which are not yet released. So let us say I plan to release configuring order region. So let's say I want to plan to release this. Now, pay attention here. When you release a transport request, um, at that time, you have a two things. You configure the transport request. So this is the transport request. And then second, we have a configuring customizing request. So first, you have to configure customizing request. So this is the task. And within the task, if you click on this button, you will see um, different other activities so within this you have done all these different configuration you see that all these different configuration you have done you can even see further detail also like what you have done into each of them so you go to order region so this is what you can go and check what configuration in what table and what kind of value you have added so you can see all that 
Okay, so now we go to customizing request. So in the customizing request, we select that. And here we have this button called release. So we click on that and it go to release button. And then it will release the transport request. It will take, you know, few, you know, minute and two, maybe late, depending upon how many tasks it is there. So it will release all these different tasks. So see the message in the bottom, task 90316 has been released, okay. After releasing the task, we got a check mark and then we select this and we have to request the customizing request. We select that and here we have a release button. So we click on it and then we hit on the release button. So after your transfer request and customizing task, is released then it will be and it is released once it is released then you have nothing else to do after it is released normally there is a background job and all that is running and based upon that background job it will basically transport into different target system so that is the purpose of doing se10 now there is something called scc1 Okay. Now, SCC1 is a transaction code to move the transport between the clients. So let us say here in the development, so release, if I want to make a move from development to quality, then I'm going to use release button. Now, if I want to move from 800 to 900, from 900 to 700, so between the client, if you want to move, in such cases, I'm going to use transaction code SCC1. So for example, so we go back. I go to SCC1 and we click on this SCC1. Okay. And when we go to SCC1, and uh, here in the SCC1, you can define the source system from which system you want. And then you can select which transport request you want. And if you have any transfer request, and actually you can choose any transfer request if any transfer request is there. And if you go to 800, for example, you want to migrate from a client. So these are the different clients. What is your source client? So let's say this is my source client. What uh, request you want to migrate? So you can choose and you say which client, so what is the source client? And let us say, this is my transfer request. And I say, include transfer request. If you want to do a test run, I can do test run. I don't want to do test run, I don't do it. And then we say start immediately. So when we click start immediately, that basically means from this source, this is, this will be moved into new client. So you have to log in to the client you want to transport to. So you log in into the client which you want to transport to, which is your target. Okay. So you log in into the client, into the SAP client, which is your target. And then you select your source, you select the transfer request, and then from the source, it move it to your target system. So that is how these uh, two transaction code, uh, SEC1 and um, SE10 being used. So thank you again. Thank you very much. And thanks for joining the session. Take care. Bye.